Hello and welcome to PSD Touch Plus Shortcut Series. I'm Martin Perhiniak, and today I'm going to show you a completely non-destructive workflow to replace the original background of a photo. This is the original one here on the left, and this is the new version with a much nicer background. So you can see I mainly did this replacement because the original background was a bit too distracting and this one makes a much nicer composition. But how to do this efficiently and completely non-destructively in Photoshop? Let me open these two images and I'm going to show you the end result first and then I'll show you how to create it. So you can see here we have a couple of layers, smart objects, smart filters, adjustment layers and masking. The most important parts of the non-destructive workflow in Photoshop. So that's the new background which I can turn off and I can even show you the Gaussian blur filter on it which makes it more believable, gives the depth of field onto it. There's also an adjustment layer to make it brighter, again, just to adjust it to the foreground. There we have a smart filter for the foreground as well to see a bit more details, a shadow highlights uh, filter, which is used as a smart filter. And then if I double click on the uh, smart object, there is the mask inside the smart object, which I can turn off and there's the original image. So everything is there inside this editing. So uh, you can see that I can change whatever I want. I can go back, double click on any of the filters and adjust it. So everything is completely non-destructive. Now let me show you how I did this. So first of all, I will need to make a selection of the background of this image. So let me use uh, the magic wand or the quick selection tool might be better in this case. So I make a selection here on the left side, first of all, okay, then I make a selection on the right side and my selection is actually quite good. The only problem is probably here on the head. I can hold down Alt and just draw over it to remove uh, that part from the selection and maybe the same thing here on the right. But remember the quick selection tool is not really a fine, uh, it's not for fine tuning your selection, it's for making a quick selection. Now I turn this into a mask and I'm going to press command I to invert that mask. Now we can turn this whole layer into a smart object because I would like to add an effect on it, image, adjustments, shadow highlights. Even though this is not a filter, this can be still added as a smart filter to this layer once it's a smart object. So smart filter, shadow highlights, and I would like to increase the amount of the shadows so to make it a bit brighter, the shadows, something like that. I click on OK, and as you can see the shadow highlights now added as a smart filter to this layer. Okay, let's just select that image that I wanted to use. This is the image which we can use as a background. Use the move tool and drag and drop it onto the other image. Then we can turn it off and I can turn off the other one as well. And move this image behind uh, our character, the portrait. And we can decide later on where to place this. Okay, and I would like to also use a smart filter on this. I would like to blur this image. So I right click on it, choose convert to smart object. Okay, and then I am going to add the blur from the filter library, blur, Gaussian blur. And I will probably use radius 10 pixels is fine. I see before and after. So this looks much more believable. Now, now that we, we know that the focus one on, was on the person, so we can always add this Gaussian blur and uh, we can click on OK. So if you look at the original image, if you double click on the smart object of the man, turn it off, you can see already this background is blurred out. But of course, the further away the elements in the background will get, the more blurry they will look like. So uh, let me just turn off the smart object, go back to the image itself. And the only problem is that the background is too dark compared to the highlights here in the foreground. So there are very strong highlights, even though the man is in, sh in shades, we can still see that there are highlights on his hat and uh, shirt. So we need to make sure the background looks similar to that. I am going to select the background image and go to adjustments 
and add an adjustment layer I am going to use curves and just simply brighten up the background to match the highlights here on the hat and the shirt so that looks much more realistic already something like that okay I can double click on properties to see more of my layers panel and it looks really good the only problem now is that I see uh, details from the trees here in the foreground, which is a bit distracting. If I'm working uh, with separate images, I might as well get rid of this. If I use the move tool and move it around, I can see, okay, there are more details here on the left or more details there on the right. It might even work. So it might be a bit more believable to use these because then we can see that the man is actually in the shadow okay of the in the shades of the tree but in the background there's more sunlight so we can either use this part here on the right or on the left or we can always use free transform and make this smaller and by the way because i'm using a, a smart object i won't lose any detail on the way so i can always make this smaller the only problem is here at the bottom we don't have enough details so i will probably need to make this a bit bigger something like that so that's that's the size i can still use okay it looks okay but i prefer to have it bigger so i just make it a little bit bigger and i probably will use this part here on the left so this looks the best for me this composition but if i want to get rid of this cloned detail here i would go into the smart object so double click on the smart object create a new layer inside the smart object and create the retouch layer there because if I use uh, cloning here or we can even use a quick selection of the this part okay and use the patch tool with sample all layers option turned on and just drag this detail first here the retouch from the sky and now you can see we got rid of it and still kept everything on a separate layer now if i press save or command s and go back to the original image you can see we not only got rid of that detail but also already applied the gaussian blur on top of it because it's a smart filter it all works on top of whatever you do inside the smart object if I decide to use the branch again, I can double click on the smart object, turn off the retouch layer, save it again, but still keep it there. Maybe we are working for a client, we can show different versions of it. Now we have the branches back again, together with the Gaussian blur. And I wanted to show you one more thing. If we have the branches there, there might be a bit of a problem because the branches are actually very close to us, while the background is much further away. So how can we make it look like the branches are more in focus while the background is more out of focus? So to get the depth of field uh, correctly in the background, the way we can do it is to go to the smart filters mask, the Gaussian blur smart filters mask, and uh, use the brush tool. I'm going to use a soft edge brush in this case, and just change the color from white to a bit darker something like probably 80% uh, the brightness of the of the color is 80% and with that if I start drawing over the branches I can fade out the blur effect on these details but still keep everything else blurred out in the image so by using like a bright gray color I could make a manual adjustment using this mask if I alt click on the mask you can see what I did there okay and if I turn on and off the mask this was before let me zoom a bit closer so this is when it's completely blurred with the 10 radius blur and this is when I use my custom masking on it a reason why I didn't use um, a completely black mask is because if I use a black mask that will be completely in focus I didn't want to do that but of course you can always do that so if I want to keep this completely in focus okay it depends on what you want to achieve you can always draw over it with black 
completely black and then that will be in focus while the background will be completely out of focus but let me just go back to the 20% version I think this is more believable and now we can always double click on Gaussian blur and increase the depth of field if we want to change uh, the focus okay so increase the blur actually not depth of field but the depth of field effect through the blur options so everything is completely non-destructive in this workflow we can even go back to the curves if I double click on it we can change the effect of the curves as well and we can always add more and more effects but remember whenever you do something like this try to think of how it would make it realistic but whenever you do something try to also make it non-destructive so you can always make edits to it if you work for a client the client will really appreciate if they can get different versions of, of uh, the same effect and in no time so if you can do it very quickly or if they ask for an adjustment and you can just quickly turn it on and off or add a bit more value to it that's the things that you can do with adjustment layers mask and smart objects and filters so that's all i wanted to show you with this example i hope you enjoy this tutorial and you learned some new tricks and if you like this series, please join me next time when I am going to talk about aligning and blending images to create a perfect group shot. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.